Okay, so we have here a Beretta 682 Gold E. It's a sporting uh, competition gun, over and under 12 gauge. Uh, the gun it breaks down into three main components. Uh, quite easy removal section here is the fore end, which is removed by pulling down on a catch. The barrels then move away from the action which leaves us with these three components, the barrel, the fore end and the stock and action. Uh, the, the assembling of the shotgun from this stage is important to remember that there are pivot points on the inside of the action that locate with the pivot points on the monoblock of the barrel. The top lever should be pushed over to the right and those pivot points engage being mindful to be careful of the ejector studs on the action as the barrels are assembled. The barrels then lock into place and assembling the fore end. The fore end clicks into position. Uh, for removal of the fore end wood, it's always very important to remember to once the catch has become disengaged from the barrel to pivot the fore end away slightly and then lift up the fore end and then away from the ejector legs. Uh, this is to avoid unnecessary damage or possible, possible breakage to the fore end wood in the two positions here and here. And the action of a, of a 12 gauge over and under we have some key features and components. The top lever, which allows, when operated, allows the gun to open. The safety catch and selector. The trigger, and on this particular model, the trigger is adjustable. It can be moved into different positions. The safety catch and the selector allow the operation of the gun uh, and firing of the bottom or top barrel first and is easily operated by the moving of this catch on the top. On the face of the action there are some visible holes, the bottom and the top, which are, allow uh, the firing pins to come through the face of the action and strike the cartridge. There is a small pin located here which works in conjunction with the top lever mechanism and there are two further pins visible which in actual fact is one complete item and these are what we call the locking bolt and these lock the barrel down into the action when the gun is closed. This is the top lever pin, trip pin. Uh, it's worth noting that this pin protrudes from the face of the action at an angle and should not be straight. As we now look on the underside of the action we can see we have the trigger guard and then the single selective trigger. On the underside of the action we have the cocking rods. It's worth noting that the cocking rods are spring loaded when the action is cocked. If the rods are not spring loaded there's a possibility that there will be a misfire and the action will need to be looked at by a gunsmith. The reason that, that possibly the, one of the rods could become fouled up or, or not spring loaded it would be down to a bit of dirt or debris uh, inside the action in a blind hole that relates to the cocking rod. Moving on to the barrels, the 12 gauge over and under barrel this area is called the monoblock we can, can visibly see two ejectors on the face of the barrel we have the two locking holes it's worth noting that there can sometimes be small amount of wear on the left hand locking hole. This is nothing to be concerned about. It's the left hand hole is the lead hole and the wear will only go to a greater or lesser degree and will not become any worse. Moving on to the muzzle. On this particular model we have OptiBall chokes, similar to the old multi chokes but a, a slightly different, um, a different style. To show the function of the ejectors, 
here we can see with the use of snap caps the correct positioning that the cartridge, cartridges would be in. They always seat into the rim of the ejector for the correct functioning this is how the gun would be when it's opened. There is a there could be a tendency for the cartridge snap cap to slip past the ejector. This would then need to be attended to by a gunsmith. Okay. For removal of the ejectors, not a complicated task, but there is a set sequence to follow. It's worth noting that the edges of the ejectors are extremely sharp. So to remove the ejectors it's always best to use a cloth or something that's going to protect your fingers. You can see on the monoblock here there is a small keyway. The ejector can be depressed and on the slide of the ejector there is a, another keyway that will line up. As you push the ejector in a small amount of pressure is applied to twist the ejector and the ejector will come out away from the monoblock in this fashion. The cloth serves two purposes, one to protect your fingers and secondly to catch the spring and plunger if it inadvertently leaves the barrel. This is the ejector spring and then what we call the ejector plunger. The plunger comes away from the spring, it allows for cleaning, easy maintenance. Those are the two components along with the ejector which make up the ejector mechanism on the barrel. For refitting the ejector, you can see on the dovetail of the ejector we have the keyway that we previously talked about and on the monoblock you can see the area here where the ejector would disengage from. Without the spring and plunger in place it's very simple to show the process of fitting the ejector and how it goes into the monoblock and with the spring and plunger behind in that position it would force the ejector so that it's now safe and locked into place. Again, without the spring and plunger in place to show slow time removal of the ejector, push, twist, and away comes the ejector. On reassembling the ejectors, it's important to remember to put the spring and plunger into the barrel first. In this operation, the spring goes first with the plunger seated on the top. The ejector locates into the monoblock. For the assembling of the ejector, the thumb on the ejector, your forefinger, push and twist and the ejector locates. For the removal of the stock from the action on this particular model and the bolt, the handle undoes. Sometimes it's worth leaving the stock bolt in place when the recoil pad is in situ. This allows the stock bolt to stay in its position. And for removing of the action, my method is to have thumb at the rear of the trigger guard and with a small tapping motion just to free the action from the wood, push with your thumb We now have the action in our hand separated from the stock. The main action body of a box lock over and under is broken into two parts or can be broken into two parts. The main action body here and the trigger mechanism just here. The trigger mechanism is located in the action and held in place generally by one screw here and a screw underneath the safety catch stroke selector. Access to the screw can be made via removing the pin for the safety catch just here. Once that pin has been removed 
the safety catch lifts up and you have access to the head of the screw. With the action body in our hands here, we can see the main components and features of the gun in the trigger mechanism. We have the mainspring which operates the hammer. The hammer hits the firing pin when the trigger is pulled. We have a small item here which is called the inertia block. This block operates the gun for the second shot and is activated by the recoil of the first shot. The safety catch runs down into the mechanism and works in conjunction with the back of the trigger and the selector, you can see the movement of the selector when we operate it with our thumb which moves this key component to the left or to the right to allow the first selection of the barrel top or bottom respectively. The top lever mechanism can be seen in conjunction with the locking bolt or the U-bolt on this particular model. These are the basic or the main components and main features of a Beretta over and under shotgun. If however you do experience any issues or problems with the mechanism, we do suggest that you contact a gunsmith for further advice. Now, fitting the action back onto the stock is quite a simple process but one that needs to be done with care for the correct location. The stock will go into the action like this. You can then hold the action and the stock together I generally have my finger on the trigger and a finger on the safety catch. It's worth locating or relocating the stock bolt and the key. And the stock bolt is then done up. At this point before tightening, check the head of the stock and the action is fitted correctly. Everything is in place. This is to Get, reduce the risk of any breaking of the stock and tighten the stock bolt hand tight and then you can just give it a little bit of a tweak to make sure